Salutations, respected viewers. I'm George from Ireland. I'm on Mile End Road in London, and behind me you see the house where Dr. Thomas Bernardo lived in the late 1870s. So Thomas Bernardo was born in Dublin, and he was uh, brought up in a Jewish family, and he converted to Christianity. I think it was just him, I don't think it was the whole family, to the Protestant denomination, and he qualified as a physician. And uh, so he spent some time working in Ireland, came here to London, working here in the East End, which was a fairly poverty-stricken area at the time, and a lot of um, refugees and immigrants from Eastern Europe, from often the Russian Empire, Eastern part of Poland, Latvia, Lithuania, settled here. Some of them ethnically Latvian, Lithuanian, Polish, and so on. Many of them Jewish. Some Irish people transmigrated here, and so on. So, because it was near the docks as well, some um, Indian sailors, and it was over overcrowded. We're quite close to Whitechapel, where the Jack the Ripper murders were to take place in 1888. Anyway, um, Bernardo was uh, horrified by the pauperism that afflicted many people uh, in this district. So he set up his own charity. He was particularly um, exercised about the fate of neglected children if their parents were alcoholic. He said that if a mother, sorry, if a father was alcoholic, it was bad enough. But if the mother was alcoholic, really the family had no chance. The children might not be fed, might not have adequate clothing, the house might not be heated, they weren't purchasing coal and timber as they should do, barefoot even in winter, things like that, and I severely beaten up. Now the law said that a, a parent was entitled to use reasonable chastisement uh, on a child and they took a very broad view as to what constituted reasonable chastisement back then. It could be broken bones. So it wasn't, uh, as long as it wasn't actual murder or attempted murder, then the police would have said, we're not interested, there's no case to answer. A mother or indeed a father uh, is entitled to punish his or her children as they say fit, so long as it doesn't, doesn't result in death. And Bernardo was gassed at this. Um, there was a lot of prostitution going on at the time, and it's until the 1880s, um, the legal age of marriage was 13 and the age of sexual consent was 13 um, until that journalist, I think it was W.T. Stead, purchased a girl for five pounds, really five pounds would be more like a thousand these days, purchased her from her mother on the understanding that she would be um, used in a brothel. Although there is some doubt that the mother was really aware of what was going on there. But yeah, the so-called white slave trade they used to say, as in um, forced prostitution. Now, it was, a, it was a rather racist assumption underlying that, as though enslaving a white was worse than enslaving a non-white person, which of course it isn't. Um, so he set up his own charity, Bernardo's, to look after these um, uh, abused and uh, neglected children and change the law eventually leading to the Children's Act where negligence by parents can uh, lead to jail time. So that was him. He died in um, 1905 at the relatively early age of 60, but his charity, Bernardo's, still goes on. He was a member of the Orange Order, which is a charitable foundation, and Orangemen and indeed Orange Women, they donate to benevolent causes. I know it gets a very bad press these days, so it won't sit well for some of those who are deeply prejudiced against the Orange Order to know that a man who did so much to reduce misery and to spread happiness and light was a member of the Orange Order. That's all from me.